everyone. Welcome to Half Hour with Ted Lasso. My name is Scott Nance. I'll be moderating today's conversation with the Diamond Dogs. Now, you know these guys. You gotta love them. And just in case you don't know quite who the Diamond Dogs are, how they came to be, let's take a look at this clip. What's happening? You having a meeting? Yep, I'm having lady problems. You know, I'd love to get your perspective on it. No. Ted, can I be honest with you? Well, let her rip. You seem intent on going 12 rounds with yourself. Why? What did you do wrong? He's right. Time to get you some of these. What, scissors? Yeah, to cut yourself some slack. Wow. Y'all stuck the landing on that. That was nice. Tell you what, I gotta get y'all some satin jackets made with Ted Lasso's personal dilemma squad embroidered on the back there. Uh, oh, that's clunky, man. There's gotta be something better here. Let me think. Oh, I know, how about uh, the EQ Warriors? The Knights of Support? Mm -hmm. uh, sounds like a brand of jockstrap. Um, the Proud Boys. <laughs> what about the Diamond Dogs? a boy, Nate. Diamond Dogs it is. Woo! All right. <laughs> Well, the Diamond Dogs it is, and joining us are the Diamond Dogs. We have Brandon Hunt, Jeremy Swift, and Nate the Great, Nick Muhammad. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on Half Hour With. Pleasure. Thanks for having Thank you, Scott. All right, well, first, let's just get right to it. Like, how proud are you by the success of the show, the popularity, the critical success, the awards you've been getting? Like, I, I mean, Brandon, let's start with you. When did you... When did it start to hit you that, that the show was just really connecting on every level? Um, pretty early after it came out, you know, you, you get on, we were getting on Twitter and, you know, there weren't a ton of people responding at first, you know, it's definitely been a, a slow creep, word of mouth thing, but the people who were writing about it were incredibly enthusiastic from very early on. And, and that was just a real good sign. You know, we do this and you just kind of hope people will kind of like it, but you know, apparently the show might be decent, but on top of that, the timing of it really, really uh, hit people at a good time. So, so yeah, I guess I guess pretty early on, and um, and it was gratifying to see. Uh, Nick, what's your what's your take on that? Gosh, I mean, it, you know, it, it's just such a joy to be part of a well, you know, a, a wonderful show with such a you know positive and hopeful message, really. But you know, to, knowing that people have taken that to their hearts, you know, in, in like Brendan says, has been a, you know, a difficult uh, year, year and a half for, for lots of people uh, in lots of different ways. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it's, you kind of, when we were making the show, I think we were all really excited about it and, we, you know, knew that it was good, the right, you know, the scripts were always brilliant and, you know, it's so much fun to play and such a great cast and crew, but uh, yeah, you never, you never can anticipate you know exactly how well a show is going to go down but yeah i mean it's kind of crazy to think that it's uh it's done it's not crazy in the sense that it's, it, sh it doesn't deserve to do well of course but that, that, <laughs> that um sorry brendan <laughs> <laughs> <bearer> <laughs> but but you know it's yeah i find it quite surreal and, and, and wonderful really just very very grateful yeah jeremy it's one thing for a show just to be great on its own merits but then when you just like sort of realize that boy, this show just came along at just the right time. And, you know, so many people on social media have said that this is exactly the show that we needed. And I believe it was the LA Times that wrote an article about Ted Lasso saying, this isn't just a show. Ted Lasso is a vibe. Like, what's your take on that? People have really um, picked up on that. Um, and well, they, they, they took it in that you know, right from the beginning, really. Um, I mean, as Brendan says, it, it, it accumulated pretty quickly. I mean, to be honest, there were a couple of slightly stinky reviews at the beginning. I thought, oh, no. <laughs> and, and then and then I saw what the public were going for. And, and, and I was scrolling, doom scrolling on Twitter, just thinking, come on, there's going to be a stinky one in there. It was like, I did about 100, you know, tweets were, that were completely crazy about it. And I've, I've never been in anything that's had that much, you know, love. And, you know, Brendan, just going to want to get start about these promos 
that that you know Jason and you know y'all did, and it's you know, fleshing it out into a regular series that has so much humor and so much depth, and is so profound. Like, what were the challenges that that you and 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 Jason really had to turn these promos into a fully realized series? Sure. Well, it was uh, me and Jason and Joe Kelly uh, had the original promos and all three of us were on board here. Then Bill Lawrence joined us as well to put the whole thing together. And we just realized pretty quickly that though those original promos were super fun and you know pretty popular for what they were, they were sketches. And we were gravitating toward making this a, a you know 300 minute sports movie, essentially, you know, broken up into 10 episodes. And you know, for a sports movie to work, it's got to have some a little more gravitas to it, a little more, a uh, little more reality to the characters. Especially since, no matter how you slice it, we are, you know, going off on a journey that is a ridiculous premise. It is wholly impossible. This would never actually happen. But everything around it can be as true to life as we can make it. Um, uh, especially, especially emotionally, you know. And there's, there's a way to do that. We hoped. Uh, and still be pretty funny as well. Uh, you know, I, on that note, Brendan, you know, this is like, you know, sometimes a, a, a British show will have like a cult following in the United States, but this has really just been just a big, big hit. And I, I think that there's something about the relatability, about the character dynamics that makes it resonate on so many levels for, for people everywhere. Is that something you would agree with? Gosh, I hope so. You know, I hope that people watch the show and they see themselves in, in one character or another. Um, and I think, you know, that, that we, we have, you know, made some effort to try to make all these characters uh, real. And, you know, a, a lot of people come into the show and they see certain characters early on and they think they're going to be, you know, certain kinds of archetype. But little do they know, we have thought it through. And, you know, why are these people that way? And, and the why of what these people are like is, is a very you know, fertile ground to draw from. And it's more fertile than what is this person? How can we make jokes off of that? So, so Nick, when you were auditioning and you were in the beginning stages for Ted Lasso, was, was Nate the character you were going after? Was Nate who you auditioned for? No, it, <laughs> uh, it's quite, I think it's quite widely known now that I, so I went for Jeremy's for Higgins. Uh, <laughs> oh. and, and, and quite. <laughs> <it>, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently it was no, no. deemed that J Jeremy was better. <laughs> Jeremy is so great. Um, so yeah, I went up for Higgins and, and obviously loved, got sent the scripts or, you know, some of the, maybe the first two episodes, lo loved it, obviously knew the, the, you know, the talent attached to it and uh, was, you know, really keen on, on being involved in that show, but had then, then obviously found out that I'd not, not got Higgins. And then I think there was maybe a, a, a week or so and I, I I was working on another show when I got asked to then take for, for Nate and uh, because I was filming another show I could only really do it in my lunch break and uh, you know in in hindsight it, it might I think it's possibly looks really arrogant but I got I was asked to do three <laughs> Brent I can already see Brendan laughing but I was asked to take three scenes and I think I only submitted one because it was it was the only <laughs> it was the amount of time I had to do it and I was like, oh, it's just going to have to be enough. And maybe I'll try and send another another point. But this is all I can do right now. And then thankfully, uh, it, it worked out. But, you know, oh, in retrospect, that must have looked so brazen. Jesus. We knew you were in the middle of doing another show. So we were, like, happy that you took the time at all. And there was a very clear, like, haste to your audition. But you... You crushed that that one scene so much. No one ever mentioned or cared that uh, that there were two other scenes we've been asking you to do in the first place. <laughs> I, can't, I, I generally don't even have the memory that there were other scenes to do. I think I was just like, I'll just do this and I'll just go and send it off. <laughs> so, Jeremy, that worked out pretty good for you, I'd say, uh, with with Higgins. <laughs> uh, seemingly so. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, I, yeah, I, now I look back, you know, we, do, we all do self tapes and everything. I actually went in, although the guys uh, were had gone back to the States, but uh, yeah, I just went in and met Theo, the uh, the casting director, and put myself on tape and, you know, crossed my fingers and, um, and uh, yeah, it worked out. Um, you know, you know, I'm, I'm almost nostalgic for those times now where you're actually going for a casting. That just... That, yeah. I think it's almost the last time I did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because of, well, partly because of, you know, the pandemic, but um, I, 
but it does seem to be the norm now that's um, just enforced it that we all do self tapes. And, uh, Jeremy well, is an example of someone crushing it, by the way. Like none of us have worked with Jeremy before um, and we had a bunch of good people we're looking at it. And then like, we got to watch this edition, everybody. And we watched Jeremy and we're like, well, we're done with the Higgins. Uh, this, is, this is who Higgins is. We're okay, on to other things. But it, and it, was, it was a unanimous consensus throughout the room, which you know doesn't always happen, but it sure happened that day. <laughs> well, Jeremy, I want to ask you, your, your chemistry with Hannah Waddingham is just fantastic. The, the, the back and forth and the, the, the chemistry that you got. I mean, like, what's it like working with her? And, and how, did you, how did you start to fall into the, the, the vibe and the, uh, the rhythm with her? Um, I think because we're both in a lot of theater, we just so, um, sort of used to getting to the point a little bit. Um, and, and we just, she's just got an awful lot of experience on stage and I have, and we just, we, we just fell into, um, into, into step with each other really quickly. And, and just, you know, each, you know, each new sort of um, chapter of their relationship uh, as it came along, we, we just uh, relished, you know, and re really enjoyed and, you know, and it got to quite a dark place by the end and then resolved. Um, spoiler, if you haven't already seen it, um, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, she's adorable to work with. Amazing. She's just fantastic. So quick. And we're both a bit musical as well. Maybe that's that helps with just, you know, comedy and music. Very closely related, I think. Um, so, yeah, I think that, that, that helps. She's just amazing. Yeah, Brenda, I want to ask about, like, once everybody got cast, how did the writing change? to adapt to the actors? Like, how did you change the writing to fit the actors better? Uh, well, the main thing we had to do, uh, you know, seeing the cast we had was like, oh, we need to write better stuff for these really great actors we have uh, because the pressure's on. Mm -hmm. um, no, like everyone, everyone came in with a really, you know, um, for lack of a better word, like respectful uh, take on the character we sort of already you know, created that was there and they just really kind of just brought to life what we had. Um, so from there on, in terms of like uh, making them um, a bespoke to the actors, it's really just like little vocal uh, quirks, like like little things that people say a lot now become what that character is. Like Nate uh, saying, oh my God, all the time is just a thing that Nick started doing. It wasn't really in the script. Um, and you don't typically say that a lot in regular conversation, I don't think, but now it's like, <laughs> Every third line, we're putting an "Oh my God" in there because we just love hearing it. Yeah, let's talk, let's talk about that actually, uh, Nick. About 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 fleshing out your characters, about about collaborating to to better flesh out your characters. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, listen, it's all credit to the, you know, to to Brendan, to you know, to all the writers on 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 that show and the creators of that show. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's all there in the writing, and uh, it was an absolute you know just a joy to play and and I think that the you know Theo and the creative team they put together such a, a, a lovely I mean honestly I know everyone says this on any show they work on but the night just the nicest bunch of people you could want to spend you know a significant amount of time of and, and I think that that's so so important maybe even more so nowadays and I, it just meant that there's such a, a genuinely warm uh, and sort of constructive atmosphere on set people you know as, as actors uh, you know, th there's no sort of fear in sort of suggesting ideas, you know, everyone can sort of uh, chip in and, you know, the writers, you know, Brendan's on set, Jason's on set, Brett's on set, um, you know, it's Joe Kelly's on set. So it's, it, there's, there's always people to hand who can sort of guide us. And um, it's just so kind of collaborative and it, feel, it feels very organic in that respect. You know, you know, I got to tell you, so when I was watching it for the second time, Nick, that something you just said just now about how how there's everyone is so nice. I, and I feel like that really, really shines through. That really comes through when you're watching the show. I thought like, not only did it look like it was a whole lot of fun to make, but you can feel the warmth and the bond between the characters. And I thought to myself, I'll bet they really all just got along really, really well. <laughs> so, so Jeremy, I want to, you know, what we're, everyone, we're talking about the writing and you know, Ted Lasso won Best Comedy Series and Best News Series from the Writers Guild. 
And that's, I mean, look, that's uh, uh, am among the many uh, kudos that this, that this show has gotten. And I just also was able to appreciate better the second time around, just how, how there's so much background to all the characters, like with Higgins, you know, he's got the small house and the kids and the, you know, the dogs and the, the 20 year old cat, uh, you know, let's, let's talk about how this really is a true ensemble series. Uh, yeah. Can I just say that that small house in the series is bigger than my own house. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, the, the writers, um, I think on the very first ep, we did a read through uh, and I just, you know, I, I just took to them immediately. They're just like the most great side of America, sort of like nerdy, funny, smart, you know, you know, just great people. And I, I, I totally agree with you, um, Scott, that, you, you know, that I think only if um, Robert Altman, I think I might have mentioned this before in other interviews, but uh, where can stand, you know, multiple views uh, um, that I've seen, uh, like this show, uh, you know, that, that things, you know, impact on you possibly more the second time or third time you see them. I mean, there are fans out there on social media who said they've seen it. 10 times or something, which is, you know, pushing it a little bit. Um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think the, the, the writing is great because the writers are experienced. They've written for great other great shows. It would be a surprise almost if, um, you know, the, the, the writing wasn't great. Um, they would have had to have been drugged or, you know, tortured or something for it to be bad. Mm. But uh, mm. they, uh, they, you know, I think that the, the uniqueness of this show comes from the sensibilities ultimately of the of the writers and the, the humanity that's in it, the the fresh take on on uh, Joe on the the comedy. It's it's all it's all from the writers, and you know we you know and they they do sweetly accommodate us, but they're just when you get each script, they're just, they're just great. They're just really fresh and, you know, it always took me by surprise. Well, I, you know, the, the other thing that really came through for me is, is just how is the arcs and, and just, there's so much about the relationships that actually isn't even written. Let's talk about the relationship, you know, really between Coach Beard and Ted Lasso and how it transcends uh, you know, you, you feel it in addition to hearing it. Um, well, that's, 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 that's very nice. Thank you. Um, you know, you know, cause Jason and I have known each other for a long time. Um, you know, we haven't spent a lot that much time in the same cities because apparently in the mid two thousands, he got some gig, uh, and then we didn't hear from him for a while. It's fine. Um, but you know, we have that to fall back on of just knowing each other and, you know, and having a, a shared shared vocabulary and such, but but also just having a very clear um, narratively, very clear role for what Beard does, and that is just supporting Ted all the time, translating for Ted, learning the rules of a sport Ted knows nothing about, um, and all those sorts of things, and uh, and speaking as little as possible. And what that has sort of done by accident, you know, with limited dialogue between us, but a lot of like you know, being together um, is it's kind of allowed our, uh, you know, yeah, shared history to sort of fill in the blanks. Like the, the history that we actually have is just kind of, you know, present. And I think that is, a, it's like a cheat code almost that is sort of filling out um, a lot of like dialogueless moments that uh, we have together. So yeah, maybe that's part of, uh, of what you're responding to. So, so Nick, it, it, there's something about Nate that Nate represents, I think, everyone watching, you know, people who aren't so well versed in, in soccer, what we call in the you know, USA here, or football in the UK. Like, what, what is it about Nick that he has, or, or Nate, that he has just the, the, the greatest arc in, in just uh, growing throughout the 10 episodes of, of the first season? I, th I think that he, I think that that, that arc, t you know, t typifies, um, you know, what, what, what Ted Lasso does pretty much sort of with anyone that he interacts with, but it's very, it's, it's quite a clear, you know, we, we all kind of root for an, an underdog um, 
we're fam familiar with that arc. And I think that's, you know, it's part of the reason why I think audiences have resonated uh, with that with that particular journey. You know, they, they want to see Nate succeed. And, um, and, you know, Ted just does, you know, brings out something in him so, so brilliantly and so wonderfully um, that you absolutely are rooting for it at the end. And, um, you know, it's a great, it's a great thing to play. And it was, it was, you know, it was absolutely something that I knew early on, even though I'd not seen the later scripts of that season, um, you know, from that first read through, I remember Jason and Brendan and, and Bill sort of explaining that the extent of that, of that arc and, uh, you know, it became a little bit about, I guess, sort of pace, pace, pacing it correctly, such that, um, you know, I didn't want to, you know, have sort of Nate peak too early in terms of his his confidence. And um, but yeah, it's just a it's just a lovely journey. And you know, what what a joy to to be to be in a show. Uh, it's an ensemble show, but that each you know that each character, like you say, just has their own little journeys. And um, you know, it's all brought about by Ted Lasso, you know, he's such a catalyst for, for all those good things. And so, yeah, it's, it's lovely. So, you know, Jeremy, watching the series again, and again, there's so much to be gained from being able to watch a series like this a second time. And there's also a beauty to it in that you could just watch it like in a day or two um, and just really binge. It's such a bingeable show. But one of the things that I really appreciated too, the second time around was just really noticing how Ted Lasso's positivity affects everyone around him. What are the ways that you see Ted affecting Higgins? Um, he, he's literally um, supporting every, everything he does and he has respect for him. Um, and, you know, as far as, um, you know, Higgins, Higgins sort of takes to him by the end of the first episode. So <laughs> as far as, um, you know, doing any spying or, you know, evil manipulative stuff to, to bring up about Ted's downfall, uh, you know, Higgins is, not only is he, he his heart not in it, but he's, he's just not really very good at it. He's, <laughs> he's a terrible spy. And, um, and um, he just, I, I think he sort of gives up about, about series, uh, series, episode five or six, you know, and um, and uh, Rebecca sort of realizes that, you know, he's, he's taken, he's gone to the good side. So uh, uh, yeah, and, and being, you know, um, part of the Diamond Dogs, as it's, um, uh, you know, eventually dubbed, um, it is, um, is great for him, you know, because I, th I think he's, a, you know, he's got a big family, but I don't know how much, how often he gets to um, to share stuff in the, in the way that he does with them, um, in, in the in the positive way that he, that he does with the the other guys in the uh, in the uh, coach's office. It's, uh, so that it's just all it's just all empowering, and um, you know, he, he's um, he moves to a much better place, you know, because it, you know, right at the beginning, he's quite a timid, you know. Uh, character treading on eggshells around Rebecca, and um, and by the end they're they're on a par with each other, really. So um, he's really sort of Ted's really sort of just moved him up the ladder, you know. Well, uh, Brendan, so you know you had this great uh, season with the first season, and how did how did you bring Hannah into the series? <laughs> So we flew to England to look at some Rebecca's and uh, we saw some very excellent actors and we came back to LA like really happy with, with the work we'd done and we you know showed everyone's auditions uh, to the writer's room and the writer's room just did not take to, um, to any of them as much as we had. Um, and so we were kind of like crestfallen and, and disappointed. And then I'm talking to a friend of mine, an uh, uh, actor named Todd Stashwick, um, uh, you know, uh, shooting the breeze about a few things, and he asked what I was doing. I was like, "Oh, just in England trying to cast this part. It didn't go as great as I wanted." He's like, "Oh, what's the part?" And I explained it to him. Um, you know, the whole breadth of it. I go like on a three-minute, detailed, granular. Here's what the what the lady is like. And at the end, he just goes, "Hannah Waddingham." Like, what? Hannah Waddingham. Look her up. She's amazing. You can hang out with her afterwards, have a beer. She's that kind of amazing. Hannah Waddingham. And Within days, she'd auditioned in London, and within days after that, she had been flown to LA to test with Jason, and now uh, here we are still talking about her. And uh, indeed, she is amazing, and you can have a beer with her, and I am so grateful to Todd Stashwick for giving us that suggestion. 
Well, I got to say, so so season one just was just phenomenal. So like you said uh, a little a little bit earlier, Brendan, you know, the, the pressure's on, you know, for season two. And uh, like, what uh, can we expect this season? How will it be a little different? And will we see Coach Beard's girlfriend return? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, there are so many of these questions that we are not even allowed to think about answering. Uh, <laughs> very similar show, a lot of the same characters. We're wearing the same uniforms on the pitch. We're still playing the same sport, but we're in a different league now. So how's that going to be different? I don't know. Um, we're going to find out. And um, and as it uh, has been out there, uh, Sarah Niles has joined the cast um, to play a sports psychologist who joins the team. And... Uh, and she's just a wonderful addition, both uh, narratively and again as someone you can just hang out with off off screen, really, really, um, really, really comfortably. She's great. Well, I think I got a spoiler yeah. to say that I have a very nice overcoat. Oh, oh. Jeremy, we're not supposed to do. Oh, Jeremy, like Tom Holland. Oh, it's oh come on, Nick, you got to throw in a spoiler. What do you got? <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I mean. I genuinely shouldn't open my mouth because it's, I just find it very difficult to talk about without giving too much away. I, I think the, so obviously at the end of season one, Nate was promoted to a coach and, you know, I guess that season one arc was an underdog story. And now he is in a position of sort of having found some confidence. And I guess this season, uh, you know, Nate's story sort of explores well what you know what happens sort of from then on I mean that's not really giving anything away I guess that's kind of obvious but uh it, it's that it might not necessarily be what people might expect um but it's been plenty of fun to play and it's still not finished we still got two more episodes to go <laughs> and I haven't wow. seen episode 12 yet I haven't read it but we did have a long chat about it yesterday oh episode 12 I love it already well, Jeremy Nick, Brandon, thank you so much for joining us on Half Hour with on Ted Lasso. A big thanks to our friends at Apple TV Plus for making this conversation happen. Gentlemen, just uh, keep doing your thing and uh, we will be watching. And for everyone who's been watching, thank you so much. And I strongly recommend that you go back and watch season one again. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Scott.